Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve, and uh, today is Sunday. I have a project I have to do today that I thought I would let you guys in on. Someone is doing a story about an article about me and typewriters, and they emailed me last week asking if I could supply them with a photograph of me with all my typewriters. And uh, I have probably around 23 typewriters currently i don't haven't exactly counted them lately but we'll find out today because i'm going to try setting all my typewriters up on the floor out in my patio room and try to photograph them with me in the picture i don't know if it's going to work i don't know if i have enough room <laughs> but we'll try it you know one good reason for why you might want to lay out or set up all your typewriters is because perhaps you really don't know what your collection looks like i mean I know individually what individual machines are like. I have this portable and that portable and whatever, but it would be kind of nice to see them all out together just to get an idea of what is it that I really like collecting and using, you know? So it's kind of, a, I think it's useful, not just for this one particular project where somebody needs a photograph, but for my own sake, maybe I need to see the collection itself laid out. So I'm thinking if I have roughly under 24 typewriters, that's like six times four. So I'm, I'm picturing a grid on the floor of six wide by four deep or vice versa. So hopefully I have room for that because a couple of the typewriters have a big footprint like the IBM Selectric or the uh, Olympia Report electronic typewriter. Both of those are pretty big footprint machines, but we'll see here. Let's get them all set up. So I'm all ready to start setting these things up. was a fun evolution. Uh, I couldn't have done it without my wife's help. She was the camera person and uh, I did several different poses down here on the floor and certainly I'm not a model nor do I have a model's physique. Well the light here from the clear story windows shining off our blinds really works as a good softbox to fill in. I did try a couple shots with uh, the flash didn't really like them all that much. Uh, yeah, it was okay. I, uh, not great photos, but hopefully the people that need these photos for their project, uh, they'll like them anyways. Anyway, what I found interesting about this was uh, the whole process of taking all of my typewriters out of the closets and shelves and various places where they're stored and getting them all arrayed into one rectangle on the floor you know, this is the whole hobby right here. The whole love of typewriters is currently represented by this assemblage right here. And uh, it's kind of interesting seeing it all in just one little floor space, like roughly six foot by six foot approximately. So I tried to uh, arrange the typewriters approximately by size. I had the IBM, the big IBM and the big Olympia Report Deluxe in the back along with the Galaxy 12 and the electric Coronet. So those big ones are in the back row. Tried to put more like medium portables or in the next two rows right here. And then I had to try to do ultra portables in the, t in the upper front two rows. I did not try to arrange these any by brand or theme or anything other than that. I mean, I could have done by country of origin, or you could organize these by color even. Well, one of the other things that looking at this collection of typewriters reminds me of is it's not just what machines I do have in my collection, but it's also what machines do I not have in my collection. You know, I've acquired almost all these machines from local thrift stores in the Albuquerque area, and consequently, the selection of brands and models has a lot to do with what is available in Albuquerque and so consequently there's not a lot of representation from European typewriter brands. I have 
an Olympia SF, a Roy, French made Roy, and a couple, three Hermes, and an Olivetti Underwood, but don't really have a lot of other European brand typewriters, which I would like to have. All these typewriters right here, they all function. They're all functional, and I like using all of them, some more than others, of course. But these are all highly functional typewriters, and consequently, there's no hanger queens here. There's no display-only, non-working typewriters. These are all functional writing tools, and I'm happy about that. I think that has been a good uh, result of my typewriter collecting hobby. So then the question also becomes logical to ask is what particular samples of typewriters here would I like or wouldn't mind getting rid of? That is a lot more sensitive of a question maybe. What to get rid of? Because it's sort of like asking which of your children would you mind sending away to an orphanage? It's hard to say. I don't know. As, as far as the manual typewriters, it's really difficult for me to say I could give any one of them away, but if probably the two that I have the least amount of hard feelings about it would be the uh, medium size blue-gray Olivetti Underwood 21 and maybe the beige Facet 1620. Maybe those two. I have a hard time getting rid of the IBM Selectric 1 or the Model 71 as it's known back there, the gray one just because it was a gift of a friend of mine and I did pay some money to get it fixed. But I don't necessarily see myself using it that much just because it's heavy, it takes up a lot of desk space. I keep it on a little storage shelf underneath my desk so it's kind of a hassle to get out. But it's a great typewriter, of course, and it's worth keeping. Some of the ultra portables are not as functional as others, like for instance, the little Roy typewriter right there. It has an awful hard platen and the imprint is kind of messy and it's just loud and kind of clanky. So it is a functional typewriter. I just don't see myself using it that much. But on the other hand, I really don't want to get rid of it. It's really fairly rare in the United States. Not all that common, at least. But most of the others, I think I, I would certainly keep even like I have two Royal Mercuries. Both of those I love. Uh, so you could say, why don't you get rid of one of those? It's, there's a redundancy there, right? Two of the same model. Well, it's hard to get rid of both of them or either one. Uh, I have a couple Smith Corona Silence. Uh, maybe justify getting rid of one of those. They are kind of redundant. Then I have the two Hermes 3000s, the Naked Rider and the bluish beige one next to it. And uh, yeah, I could get rid of one of those maybe, but they're two different typefaces and they both have special significance to me. So again, you know, that's the problem with collecting typewriters. When you place special significance upon certain machines, then it becomes harder to get rid of them. They become more like pets or family members or whatever. There's a certain fondness for them. So I don't get an opportunity to talk about my entire collection of typewriters all at once. The one that I've had the longest is probably been this Royal Mercury. And I got this at John Lewis's shop here in Albuquerque. And I've had it since maybe 2005 or 2006, something like that. And then the next typewriter I got was this blue and beige Hermes 3000. I got it at Brown and Smith. As far as the, the ones I've acquired after that, it's harder to say. I think the Olivetti Underwood 21 I must have acquired next. Um, I got it at a little thrift store. The, this typewriter was the one where the guy rode, in 1968 he rode across country on a motorcycle to New Mexico to become a writer. He traded his motorcycle for this typewriter and I have the original receipt in the case that documents the trade from a used car store and a Nichols typewriter shop. And then I think uh, this was the next typewriter I got, $20 at a thrift store, the uh, Galaxy 12, great typewriter. And then the rest of them, it's hard to really say when I got them, but let me just introduce them to you anyway. So. This is a Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12 electric typewriter with the 
power return that we named jitters because of her rapidity of carriage return power. And this is the IBM Model 71, which is a, known as an IBM Model 1, I guess. I acquired that in 2018 and got it fixed at a local typewriter shop that specializes in IBMs. This is the Olympia Report electronic typewriter. I got it uh, early in 2018 also. This one uh, had belonged to a local Associated Press office, as you can tell by the by the logo right there. And it's a wonderful daisy wheel typewriter made by Nakajima. This is the Smith Corona Silent. Got it at a thrift store. Took some cleaning, but it's a nice typewriter. This Remington Quiet Writer is a wonderful typewriter. Medium size. I love the color of it, the light green color. It types wonderfully. We took it on vacation early in 2018 down to San Antonio. This is a Hermes 3000 in a beige, originally in a beige case that was pretty dirty. And when I took the chassis out of the case to clean it, I liked the look of it so much that I kept it like this, made this wooden base for it and made a wooden storage box for it. And this is the Naked Rider. This is the Roy Ultra Portable Folding Typewriter that I acquired this year. And it's French made. Neat little machine. This Facet 1620. I got at a little thrift store um, for $20, and it's a great typewriter, very well made. It has the smoothest carriage of any typewriter I've ever used. This one I got at a local thrift store. This is a beautiful Smith Corona Electric 5 Series Electric from the 1950s. I've had to service it recently for some glitchy little problems in the spindle that operates the uh, tight bars, but it's working good now, and it's just a beautiful color and electric typewriter. Probably the smallest, highest quality tight bar electric, I would say. This Smith Corona Silent Super was a Craigslist purchase from what I describe as a grungy hippie guy in Albuquerque, and this typewriter was super dirty, super stinky, and it's taken me, took me a long, long time, like months and months, to get it working reliably without skipping. Even now, when you open it up out of the case, it has a slight smell to it, and I keep a scented dryer sheet in the case just to absorb some of the smell. This is the Royal Quiet Deluxe, gifted to me by my friend David. Wonderful typewriter, has a great imprint. This was the Underwood Portable that I acquired from a thrift store. It's a great machine. This Corona Standard was a Craigslist find. The gentleman had last used it in 1980. This is the Skywriter that I recently got this year, and uh, it's working pretty good now. The escapement skipping problem is pretty much fixed, I think. This is the Hermes Rocket, but I had this serviced recently by Bill Wall in uh, Mesa, Arizona. Working great now. Olympia SF. This is a great little portable, ultra-portable typewriter. Solid, a bit heavy, but has a really nice feel to it. A brother made Webster XL 747. I love the Robin's Egg Blue. It's a typical brother in the sense of the feel of it. It's a little hard and it's a little clanky and loud, but they're solidly, re reliably made typewriters. Here's a brother Charger 11 I got in the last couple years. It actually has a slightly better feel to the typing than the Webster, but it does not have a variable touch adjustment, but somehow it has a better touch anyways. This is the other Royal Mercury that I just acquired this year, almost brand new, and never been used. It still has the shipping fixtures and stuff. Types a little bit more reliably than the Royal Mercury I've had in my collection longer, but actually this is uh, two years older than that one. 71, that's 73. And finally, the latest in my collection is this Thermal Printing Brother EP20 typewriter that you've seen me feature in the last video or two. So that's the entire collection. So this gets to the subject matter of naming your typewriters. So maybe you're the kind of person that likes to name your cars. I think I had a Toyota pickup truck back in the 1980s that I named Akio because there was a local advertisement on TV for American Toyota, the local Toyota dealer, and they had a guy named Akio in there anyways. But my wife has always kind of named her cars. So actually all three of our vehicles we have names for. 
right now. But as far as typewriters, I haven't really named my typewriters all that much, except there's two of them here that have a name. For some reason, only two of them have garnered a name. I mentioned Jitters already, but that's Jitters. I'm introducing you formally to her. It's a her. Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12. A powerful and rapid typing action and the power return. So that's jittery, very energetic typewriter. And we love the kind of beige, chocolate brown, kind of 1960s colors to her. And then we have Adobe Rose. Adobe Rose is the Royal Quiet Deluxe that I acquired in 2018 and love the typewriter, love the look of it. It has a great impression or imprint uh, for being a uh, elite sized font. But for some reason, none of the rest of this collection have earned themselves a moniker, a nickname, through no fault of their own, just my lack of imagination, I guess. Okay, so there's another aspect to a typewriter collection you might want to think about, and that is how do the various machines rank against each other in various categories? In terms of the best feeling typewriter, the best touch of any of these typewriters, it is difficult to say. First of all, Adobe Rose, the Royal Quiet Deluxe is awfully nice touch, but so is the Remington Quiet Writer, and so are both Hermes 3000s and the Smith Corona Skywriter. But I have to give credit to the Smith Corona Silent Super and the Smith Corona Silent. They also feel great. And not far behind it, of course, is the 6 Series Galaxy 12. So all of those machines are really top-notch, I think, in terms of the way they feel. Now, for ultra portables, though, as far as ultra portables, of course, the Skyrider, I think, feels the best, but the Olympia SF feels pretty good, too. It's, it's a harder touch, but I just like the action. And then honorable mention goes to the Brother Charger 11. I think it's a pretty cool typewriter as far as its touch. These two older ones right here, the Corona Standard and the uh, Underwood Portable, they're no slouches either. In fact, I believe this Underwood Portable, it's right up there as far as the touch. So it's really difficult to rate as far as just the feel of it. It really is a subjective thing also. Now, as far as which machines are the best for sitting down and writing, just solid writing tools, I think it's across. So if you look at manual machines, first of all, and in my collection, um, you know, the Royal uh, Quiet Deluxe is right up there, but it's an elite font, 12-character machine. But the Remington Quiet Writer, that is a nice, solid writing machine also with a Pica font. Uh, the Olivetti Underwood 21 is also a really good manual typewriter, and I think the Galaxy 12, you could categorize it as. And honestly, both Hermes 3000s, I think all of those for manual typewriters are, would be great for writing. Now, as far as portability, a portable typewriter that it would be great to take to a coffee shop, <sighs> gotta go with a thermal printing Brother EP20. It's the quietest typewriter. It's really small. Uh, I think it's the thinnest of all of these, even compared to the Roy when it's folded up. Yeah, I think the uh, battery-powered thermal printing typewriter. It also runs on an AC adapter if the batteries are low, but that is probably the most quiet typewriter, most usable in a coffee shop situation. But if you talk about manual typewriters only, ultra portables, well, it's a cross between, I think the, my particular Skywriter is a little quieter than the Rocket, but they both have a pretty good, pretty good touch to it. The Skywriter has a Pica font, the Hermes Rocket has a 13 character per inch font. So a little bit of difference there. As far as which one is the prettiest. Now, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, obviously. Um, first of all, it's hard not to like the Robin's Egg Blue Webster XL 747. Uh, the classic grand piano shaped Corona Standard the wonderfully old, slightly rusty looking Underwood portable. Those are all wonderful machines. I think the Smith Corona Electric, this one here in the turquoise blue with the bright red electric logo on the front, that's just hard to beat as far as looks. 
And I think the blue two-tone Galaxy 12 is a pretty nice looking typewriter as well. But you'll notice I tend to gravitate toward blues, probably my favorite color. Um, honorable mention, I think, has to go to the Naked Writer. Uh, I really like the way that Hermes 3000 looks outside of its boxy square 1970s plastic body. And that's the reason why I made it like that. But uh, honorable mention goes to that. And if you like that brownish colored two-tone 60s look, there's the uh, Auto Coronet Automatic 12. That's pretty good too. Now, if the question is which of these is the quietest, just absolutely the quietest typewriter of all, of course, you got to go with the EP20 thermal printing typewriter. It's quieter than any of the electrics back there. Uh, speaking of which, as far as the electric machine, so there's three of them there, and then this electric here. Boy, it's hard to pick which one I would like the best. I really think I aesthetically like the Smith Corona electric the best. But I think for practicality's sake, I think this Olympia uh, Report Electronic made by Nakajima I actually like it better than the Selectric. It's smaller, well, it, yeah, it's thinner, it's certainly lighter, it has a carrying case, a practical plastic carrying case with a handle. Uh, it's just a more pragmatic typewriter. Taking nothing away from the IBM though, but it's, it's just a really heavy typewriter. And IBM Selectrics are known to need service. They are not entirely that reliable over the long haul, especially if you use them a lot. On the other hand, I've done virtually nothing to that coronet. The insides of it are still grody, filthy, and it still continues to work fine. So the honorable mention for reliability goes to the, the 6 series, although it's very similar to the 5 series. But I think that's my favorite electric. As far as quietness, though, uh, absolutely the uh, thermal printing typewriter is the quiet, quietest. Now, beyond that, which would be second place, like say among the manual typewriters, what would be the quietest? Who, hmm, well, let's try it here without paper. Now, I think the Skyrider is the quietest of those two. And as far as the Hermes 3000s, which are both pretty nice machines, uh, they're awful quiet also. I think it's going to be a really close call between the Hermes 3000s and the Skyrider for a quiet manual typewriter. However, honorable mention for quietest manual typewriter also has to go to Adobe Rose Rural Quiet Deluxe and the Remington Quiet Writer. Both of them are fairly quiet manual machines, but surprisingly, the little Skyrider is really quiet. Well, before I close this up, I do have to uh, make some coffee. It's getting uh, to be 12.30 in the afternoon. And uh, then I have to think about putting all these typewriters away. Oh, I hate to think about that. <laughs>